What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my uh, StreamYard virtual studio with an amazing man by the name of Tom Palladino. He has an incredible story and an incredible company that we're going to be talking about today. But Tom, first off, how are you, brother? I am well. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to have you. So you guys, let me give you guys Tom's uh, background, but I will say that him and I have been talking off air and he wants to do things for the world at the same level and maybe even greater than I want to do. So there's a a very interesting uh, synergy here, but uh, Tom is a scalar energy researcher based in Florida. Um, For some of you guys, and I would say now a great majority of you guys, you understand the power of scalar energy, but it is the fundamental life force energy found everywhere in the world space in the universe it originates from the sun and stars uh it is known as chi prana om mana life force pyramid energy or even zero point energy are all synonymous terms for scalar energy uh i was telling him orgone is the same thing he theorized that all energy in the universe initiates as scalar energy i would agree and that the sun of our solar system and the stars of all of the universes, I'm adding that, are the points of origin, the storehouses for scalar energy. And he further theorizes that scalar energy is instructive energy, which I would agree with, as the entire universe is instructed by this divine essence. Subsequently, all spiritual, cognitive, emotional, and physical activity in the universe is initiated and maintained by scalar energy instructions, Scalar energy provides order in the universe. Beautifully stated. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay, so, because I want to ask you this before we jump into the topics, because I always, when I speak to people that are into the consciousness realm, genre, sphere, whatever you want to call it, I kind of want to get your sense of where we're headed. Today is Thursday, February 17th, 2022. Uh, The world finds itself in a very peculiar and precarious place. And I would say as a person who is half glass, half full, that we are going to create the new earth slash golden age, no matter what. But I would ask you, Tom, right now, like just your opinion on where we're going and where we are right now. There's always hope. And I'm always hopeful as you are. And the glass is always half full. And so I always look at the positive side. And I think if we really concentrate on that positive side, we can overcome many problems, many issues. There's just too much negativity in the world. On balance, I'm a very positive, happy person. Beautiful. Okay. So let's talk about your tech. So first bullet point, first conversation point is how everyone can be treated by way of a a photograph or an image, no matter where you are in the world. Talk about that. Okay, working with scalar energy, it's not electricity. There's two dimensions. Scalar energy is a separate dimension of that of electromagnetic energy. And scalar energy, we might call a quantum entanglement or consciousness in which I work with people's photographs. I'm holding up my photograph. My photograph has an energy signature. My light is embedded on this photograph. And I actually place photographs inside my instrument 
And in so doing, I can access that quantum field, that energy field. So you cannot readily do that with electricity, or if you can, it's, it's diminished. Working with scalar energy, I can work with photographs of people, and that is the substitute for the person being in my laboratory. So if you will, a photograph is like the bilocated version of a person or an, an animal for that matter. Awesome, man. Do you want me to share a picture of the technology? Sure. Why not? Sure. Let me do These that. are scalar, scalar energy instruments that I've developed with engineers. And it's Sweet. unique. These are custom built instruments. And the point that I'm trying to make is this is the new invention. This is the new technology that we're walking into. These are not electromagnetic instruments. And in so doing, we've developed these instruments to control consciousness, to control that zero point energy field. That is a scalar energy instrument. I actually take people's photographs and I place them in a receptacle just to the side of those Tesla coils. And in so doing, the photograph is within submerged, so to speak, in a scalar energy environment. It's no longer an electromagnetic environment. Fascinating stuff. So that is, those are Tesla coils. Yep. Yep. So how much does it, did it, so you have built this technology and crafted and designed it, you know, from like the ground floor yourself. That's, that's correct. That's correct. That's pretty amazing. How, I how did you. Tesla and another great American inventor by the name of Hieronymus. Yeah. God, God gave me the wisdom. I work with a brilliant. I work with a brilliant engineer, but it's it's this is all groundbreaking research. It's from from scratch we've done this. It's amazing, man. Well, compliment yeah. compliments to you. I, I I'm I'm a I, how would I say it? I'm a very learned and and eager researcher when it comes to the quantum, you know. And I'm I'm very familiar with Tesla and Bitfield Brown, and you know a lot of these guys that did a lot of stuff in the early part of the 20th century, you know, in 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 understanding scalar waves and technology and all that. And as you know, a lot of this stuff, a lot of the people have been hidden. A lot of people have been given credit where they shouldn't have been given credit. You know, again, because his story, right, is written by the victors. Yes. Um, but this is but this is this is fascinating um stuff. And again, looking at the technology, you know, I wanted to obviously, as you had asked me to, to like share this with people so they don't think this is like, you know you with a couple of crystals, you know, waving your hands like, you know, magic or anything like that. But this is actually really proven science. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, um, so why don't you just talk a little bit about more? Let's go a little bit deeper about the photo and how this works. Like that, you know, obviously you just explained it, but let's talk about like how someone would, would, sure. would do this. So scalar energy lives, leaves a, an impression, a signature on everything, including your photograph. Now, what have I discovered about a photograph? It's your real-time signature. My photograph reports my soul, mind, and body in the real present time, in the real time. And I can decipher from my photograph exactly how I feel. My biorhythms can be monitored on my photograph, and they match per se, my biorhythms as a person, as a physical person. Meaning what? Well, the photograph is the energetic copy of a person. Right. So you don't need to come to my laboratory. You send, you email me your photograph. Now, this is the new science in which we transcend time and space. You know, not everybody lives in the state of Florida. You don't have to visit Florida. You send, you email your photograph to me, and I access you by way of your photograph. Well, to me, that's that's a wonderment in and of itself. Amazing stuff. Um, I mean, I have so many questions for you. <laughs> yeah. um, is there a way? So you and I will talk about this off air. You know, maybe I'll just do this today. Um, you know, I can send this to you and, you know, you and I, I can report back. Cause I mean, obviously with, you know, with this, I want to, um, you know, further explore this with you and hopefully help you in, you know, getting this out to more and more people, but, uh, may maybe talk a little bit more about scalar energy as far sure. as, you know, one of the talking points that you gave me is that it's, you know, an unlimited energy source. Right. Right. Well, where does it come from? What's the origin, the sun, the stars. If you've ever looked yeah. at the universe, you have to, I, I ask myself this pressing question, what gives power to the stars and why don't they burn out after supposedly a, a long period of time? It cannot be 
energy that experiences entropy. In other words, many scientists today or, or lay people will say that a thermonuclear reaction takes place at the center of the sun and that's what gives it power. And I say that's nonsense. Right, right. It has to be scalar energy. Can you imagine a fireplace, so to speak, that would never burn out, that would provide heat and, and light and, and, and warmth for the entire solar system? And if so, wouldn't that fire, so to speak, if it's a wood fire, wouldn't that burn out? Of course it would. So the wood fire entropy, the thermonuclear reaction, is, right. is the fire that should have burnt out, should have subsided a long time ago. What's the point? It's scalar energy that powers our sun. It's a different form of energy. It's not electricity or magnetism that powers our sun. So I have captured sun energy and I can prove that in my laboratory. That instrument is a miniature sun and that's not electricity or magnetism. As a matter of fact, anytime I have my cell phone close to that instrument, my cell phone cannot operate because the scalar energy signal overrides the electromagnetic signal in my cell phone. So I can prove, at least by that model, that a scalar energy instrument is not electricity because my cell phone and my computer or any TV for that matter cannot function in a scalar energy environment. Why? It's different. Mm -hmm. It's not electricity or magnetism. So my point being is this, we have discovered with these instruments perpetual energy. We've discovered free energy for mankind. That instrument that I showed the audience is a free energy instrument in which I can send a signal to anybody in the world by way of a photograph. Well, today in my laboratory, I was working with over 250,000 photographs. Many of those photographs can be miniaturized or put on a collage. So my instrument works like a satellite in which I can send energy to the force field of people by way of a collage of photographs, or in this case, today I was working with 250,000 people around the world. Meaning what? I have a free energy device that can send out 250,000 different signatures to 250,000 people scattered throughout the world. That is the wonderment of scalar energy. That's not electricity. What I've described is a scalar energy phenomenon. Amazing. Now, human beings, from, from my understanding, also are capable of emitting scalar waves. Is that is that correct? Of course. The, the human mind and the heart are perfect examples of scalar energy vessels. We, we Everybody has scalar energy as a gift. Um, the right. world is permeated with scalar energy. However, sadly, academia does not recognize it. There are two energies, scalar energy and electromagnetic energy, both coincide. We, we are, frankly, we're experts at both energy. Uh, every, everybody's seen or at least experienced scalar energy effects. Everybody has experienced electromagnetic effects. Sadly, academia only considers one paradigm, electromagnetic energy. But isn't that for, I mean, let's just be honest, it's for profit, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, the world systems... The fossil fuel universe, you know, everything is based on electromagnetic, even Tesla stuff for the most part. I mean, I mean, you, you, you're, you're, you know, I know that, that there's scalar stuff coming, but everything that they've even kind of slowly leaked and let out is still electromagnetic. Yes. Right. So, I mean, we're not even remotely close to what exactly. uh, Tesla was harnessing. I mean, even Tesla cars right now are somewhat of a scam. I mean, I just talked to a, uh, one of the world's leading EMF guys. And he's like, dude, you know, you probably know this, but most of my audience doesn't know this. He goes, people that drive Teslas right now are shortening their lifespan by between seven and 10 years. He's like, they're literally irradiating their internal organs in ways they can't even comprehend. Now, I know you probably know about the book uh, from Furstenberg, right? The, the Rainbow Universe. And, you know, he talks about the harmful waves of electromagnetic uh frequencies right. and you know where this is on the scale and like how harmful this is to human biosystems and stuff and it's it's getting weird i mean you know this isn't me and you having this conversation today but like we are bombarding this planet with dissonant energy yes it is dissonant energy it, you know use the analogy some people never want to live close to high tension wires why right. well right. That, that they're prudent i would not want to live close <laughs> to high tension wires because who knows what frequency 
are, are being given off by those high tension wires. Right. But at, at that at that current, that that level of voltage, my goodness, it, it is going to cause it is going to cause physical as well as uh, uh, psychological problems. Sure, it will. So what's my point? With with all that we've advanced with electromagnetic energy, it still experiences entropy. It always will. Right. The signal always weakle, weakens. It diminishes. There's some diminution of the signal. And it is deleterious. Yeah. Electromagnetic energy is deleterious to our health. Yes. Yes. I mean, look, it's a fact now. This is not conspiracy theory. Again, Furstenberger's book, you know, you've got guys like Dr. Cowan, uh, Kaufman, there's amazing researchers and scientists out there that are telling us what 5G and 6G yeah. packet burst EMFs do to biological right. cells. This right. is not conspiracy theory. It's not. 5G is such a tremendous amount of energy. Some, some people, to use an analogy, uh, will use the uh, uh, catchphrase, if you will. It's like standing close to a, a microwave 24 exactly. hours a day. You know, it's, it's so it's much energy. It, it is a great deal of energy. And, and the results, what we see right now, mm -hmm. the, the evidence that's forthcoming is, yes, it is causing disease. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And, you know, honestly, uh, I, I've, I've, I've done a lot of research on this in the last six months. But my wife and I just came from South Beach. And I was down there uh, doing some work stuff. And I was staying in a very nice hotel in South Beach. And honestly, Tom... The entire Lincoln Boulevard with all those high rose hotels is just a gigantic beacon. It's a 5G tower. And both of us, yeah. and again, I, I say this so people truly start understanding this. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is not tinfoil hat stuff. We were struggling to sleep at night. We really felt like that we were being hit sure. with the 5G bursts and frequencies because we were getting these like mildly pulsing headaches and both of us had them right. and it was crazy. And I mean, literally we stayed there for four nights and we were like so grateful to come home where my house is so grounded and I have all this, you know, EMF crystal embedded technology in my house and stuff like that. And I sleep like a baby here, but it's like, it's mind blowing to, 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 to understand what is happening right now to the world. And yet so few people are aware of again, this dissonant energy and these dissonant frequencies. And we, and we are, yes, cellular, we, we are being harmed. Sure we are. Sure we are. And, and 5G is, is, is going to be put under the microscope, so to speak. And, and we'll see many people are already, if you live close to a 5G tower, many people feel that, that it's harmed their health already. So I know. It's, I know. there's just, it's, it's bad technology. It really, it hasn't been thought through. Well, I, I, I would, so I would say it is important to talk to experts like you, you know, who can say, yes, it's true. Right. Because there's so many paid off lackey shills out there who say that's not true. There's no yeah. science, you yeah, know, no, there, there is, yeah. And if you, if you're that. objective and if you read that science and, and don't necessarily listen to the media because right. they're controlled by the cabal. <laughs> Right. If you if you do read that science and it is objective, much of that science is pointing out to the fact that these beacons, these five G towers, right. are are just too much for some people. Some people right. have headaches when they're right. in in the vicinity of these towers. Yeah, no, there's no question. And I will just say, if you are one of those people, and obviously the larger the city, the bigger the coastal population area, or urban area, the more the five G towers are. I mean, I'm in Southern California. You're in Florida. They're everywhere now. Get out into nature and ground. Yeah. Spend at least 45 minutes to an hour a day, whether it's the sand, the earth, the streams, a lake, whatever. Get into nature. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the Fully Optimized Health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up and I'll see you and talk to you soon.
scalar energy, the single source where all light in the universe initiates. Now, I want to ask you a question because I know that, you know, the, the scientists that watch me will say, but Jay, he's talking about uh, energy that burns out from electromagnetics, but scalar also burns out if he's right, because we have, you know, neutrinos and we have, you know, black holes and we have stars mm -hmm. that fail. So like, can you explain, you know, coming from sure. you, like at what That's point very... does scalar energy collapse inward? Yeah, that's a very good point. A scalar wave will always exist. Now, you right. can convert scalar into electromagnetic energy. What am I getting at? If you look at the center of a star, that environment is self-contained. It's always scalar energy. That's why the stars never burn out. Yes, right. there are cycles, but even a black hole has tremendous power, tremendous sure. energy. So whether it's a star, a star that is in a cycle, a, a black hole, it's still scalar energy. That's the power. That's the source, the life force behind that. Now, imagine once you leave the star, the center of the star, scalar always degrades into electromagnetic energy. I have proven this. And Dr. Hieronymus has proven this. My instrument is a miniature star. And right next to that, Tesla coil is a scalar energy environment. But if you remove yourself 20 feet away, it starts degrading into electromagnetic energy. My predecessor, Hieronymus, proved that. I have proven that. So scalar energy is a double helix. It's a phi spiral. It's perfect. But in many environments, it degrades and it eventually will convert into electricity and magnetism. We have proven that time and time again. Meaning what? Well, if you want the perfect environment, you go to the center of a star in which you have nothing but perfect coherence, the perfect consciousness, perfect scalar energy at the very center point of a star. I want to have deeper conversations with you. This is beautiful stuff. Uh, and I cannot wait to help you, if possible, get this to more people because I'm when I read your bio and your introduction, man, it resonated so deep in my soul. Like I really, I really, really want to get deeper with this and stuff like that. And I'm actually writing my life's work right now about raising your vibration. I'm probably going to use some of your, uh, you know, your findings and some of your information. And of course, quote, quote you and source you in my book. But uh, anyway, I'm mind blown by this. Um, so like, where do I really want to go with this? Um, Cause I could go a lot of different directions with you. You know, you're talking about how, how can we compare scalar energy with God, with source creation, with universal consciousness? That's because, a good point. You know, the great, yeah. Well, the great ancients, I want to set you up the great, you know, ancient sages, gurus, mystics, you know, they always come back to light is God. You know, Osiris talked about how light was God. You know, Toth or Hermes talked about light was God. I mean, yes. how do we combine this in a, you know, not two geeks talking quantum stuff, but, you know, so the, the average person who isn't like you and I can understand th this, this, this characterization of, you know, the embodiment of light mm -hmm. is truly creation. Yes, that's brilliant. You're right. God is light. God is scalar light. God is not electromagnetic energy. Right. So the perfect energy, the, the initial, the primary energy of the universe is always scalar light, which is divine right. light. Right. That's the, it really is the essence of the omnipresence of God. But sadly, that energy, once it leaves the star, then becomes electromagnetic energy. So if you really want to, to give an analogy to God, it would be the sun. The sun is the supreme force in the universe. It never burns out. It's perpetual energy, perpetual motion. So the sun really personifies God. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. And I think, again, the ancient, uh, you know, whoever was here, whether they were interdimensional, traveling through stargates. I mean, this is another question I have for you, right? Like scalar energy would be the modicum or the method of traveling between two points that were billions, if not trillions of miles, again, yeah. from a linear standpoint in the third dimensional aspect of awareness, you know, that's how you would transverse, right? So it's like, we think, or we believe 
that all of these amazing, you know, geodidactic and, uh, you know, uh, ancient temples, these monolithic, you know, Machu Picchu, Gobeki Tepe, I could go on. A lot of these were portals, uh, Tom, and mm -hmm. the ancients, and again, whether they were interdimensional beings themselves or interstellar or trans, ultra terrestrial, trans dimensional, whatever you want to call them, they were able to use and harness scale or energy to travel these insane great distances. And again, you know, I really do believe that that's what the people at CERN are doing is they are attempting to, through again, electromagnetic, break through these, you know, ripple or create ripples in time to like do whatever they're going to do, whether it's good or bad. I'm sure it's probably a combination of both. Uh, and I know good and bad doesn't mean anything outside in third dimension because everything is experience to experience. But but the reality is, is that that's what I think we have when you see these, again, ancient uh, look, you know, sites that they were portals or they were stargates or both or a combination and they were harnessing scale or light. Do you think that's what was happening? If, if you look at many of these monolithic structures on an yeah. obelisk or a pyramid, sure. they are passive scalar energy. Uh, vessels right now right. as we speak. Now, if you were to place what I call the Ark of the Covenant inside an obelisk or a pyramid, it would power that that edifice. Yes. So basically, the Ark of the Covenant was a device that literally harnessed scale or light to yes. then power whatever it was. So, so, so maybe you can explain like what the pyramids were doing or what they were really for. The, the, it's hard to say the exact purpose of a pyramid. If you look at it, it it's it's really the, it's a wonderment in and of itself, an architectural yeah. wonderment. And yeah. I, frankly, I, I don't think man could have done that. Mm -hmm. I'll just I'll just leave it at, at that. <laughs> right. I'll just leave it at that. So what what is my point? I come from a Christian background. I do sure. believe it was an Ark of the Covenant. I believe right. that Moses and the Israelites had an Ark of the Covenant, and that Ark of the Covenant never behaved like electricity. Why? It was a scalar energy vessel. Right. right. If you look, if you read carefully how the Ark of the Covenant could change nature. Right. And how, how you could command nature. Well, guess what? My Ark of the Covenant allows me to command to control viruses and bacteria. So I am on that way. It's stepping stones now. But I'm on the way to controlling nature as Moses and the Israelites could control nature with the Ark of the Covenant. It's so amazing that you and I are having a podcast here today. And again, there are no coincidences in the unified field. There are only synchronicities. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm reading a book for the second time as I write my current book, Return of the Children of the Light, which is Incan and Mayan Prophecies for a New World. And um, this is from the book. This is from... Uh, Hermes, light is the true man, although men may not recognize it, although they neglect it. Uh, Osiris is the light. He came forth from the light. He dwells in the light. He is the light. The light is hidden everywhere. It is in every rock and in every stone. When a man becomes one with Osiris, the light, then he becomes one with the whole of which he was a part. Then he can see the light in everyone, however thickly veiled. All the rest is not, but the light is. The light is the life of man. Light is nearer than all else within his very heart. Look for the light. There it is. It's yeah. all been given to us through these but, ancient sages but, and these wisdom teachings about the light and what the light is. What's the point here? Light is fundamental. Exactly. Light, light is the engine, is the intelligence of the universe. And then the action therefrom there are many, there are millions of, of actions that are caused by light. The point is, this is the cause and effect that we've been looking for. The first cause is light, specifically right. scalar light. That's the first cause that drives the sun and the stars, not electricity. So why is this so important? When you control scalar energy, you control the universe. That's, that's it. I mean. It. End of story. I mean, so then the question, you know, and again, you know, you, you said the magic word, the cabal, you know, the NWO, you know, the archons, whoever they are, who gives a shit, but I don't even like mentioning them, but 
they obviously are harnessing the power of scalar light, right? Through their deep, dark secret technologies, the black budget industry, you know, DARPA. I mean, I could give you another bunch of agencies that have, you know, four or five letter alphabet acronyms, but why do they keep mankind, meaning, you know, us, the proletariat, why are we not allowed to have these technologies right now, Tom? I mean, is it still just profit? Like, what, what's the point at this point? Yeah. Profit to suppress us. What, what did the Ark of the Covenant do for Moses and the Israelites? It gave them victory. It liberated right. them. Right. It, it right. liberated them. Pharaoh and his army could not compare to that. Right. It liberated them. It, it had what many people call jaw-dropping powers. It does. Why don't why don't the, it's the same scenario today? Why don't we have scalar energy? The cabal does not want to see mankind liberated. Scalar energy will liberate mankind. It's free energy. It will allow us to control the outcome. Well, the cabal wants to control the outcome. Well, scalar energy will will change that. Yeah, man. So how can your technology besides do what it does for the individual person and, you know, reading the photography and, you know, and, and when you should probably talk about a little bit about like some of the things it can do, because first off, my audience is very educated on this. I've had many quantum energy healers. I've interviewed a lot of people. So they understand, you know, their, uh, their biofield, you know, okay. their etheric energy, you know, they understand, uh, you know, reading, um, you know, from like Curly and photography and you know, how people look at the aura, auric fields and all that stuff. So I have a pretty educated thing, but like, can you kind of just get into yeah. what you can do from the scalar wave reading of the photography? Right. So to be specific, when I'm working with a person's photograph, the yeah. instrument will pick out, will decipher what viruses, bacteria, parasites are on a photograph and then send the necessary energy into the photograph to destroy the herpes virus to break apart mycobacterium tuberculosis that causes TB, to break apart candida albicans. Now, what's my track record? Well, you, the track record is by way of testimony. So everybody who's ever come to me, let's say they had the herpes virus, and after I treated their photograph, people will have a follow-up PCR test, and all of those PCR tests come back negative for herpes working with HIV clinics in India and uh, throughout Africa. And people send me photographs. I, I don't go, I don't travel to India or Africa. And after I work with their photographs, people will have a follow-up test and they no longer have HIV. Wow. It's gone. No, no detectable viral load. And they're recovered from HIV viral disease. They feel fine. Now that's the new technology. That's the new science of scalar energy in which conventional science cannot prove or disprove what I'm doing because this is not Newtonian physics. Right. And there's no scientific test for a photograph. Right. I, don't, I won't say that there is or, or there will be in a short period of time. So the results are what I'm concerned with. And the people around the world tell me after I work with them, they no longer have herpes. They no longer have HIV. They no longer are, are suffering from tuberculosis or typhoid fever, et cetera. They no longer have the hepatitis virus. That is the beginning body of evidence. It's amazing. And I, I want to add some things for you or to this podcast in, in how I know you're right. And I, you know, I speak about this often, uh, not in public and private, but I'll speak in public now. Uh, and I am doing a presentation uh, in, in front of a bunch of, you know, allopathic science-based, you know, Newtonian physics-based uh, physicians pretty soon on very deep uh, quantum field and quantum mechanics. And just, you know, like I said, I'm going to add some of the stuff that you're talking about. Not, it's nothing new what you're talking about to me. I mean, it's new to everyone for the most part, but I mean, I'm in the same field that you are. Um, when you understand, when you get to a level of awareness that we are not these physical bodies, you know, Tom Palladino is not that flesh puppet. Jay Campbell is not this flesh puppet that all we really are is standing waves and vibrating molecules, particles, atoms of energy. 
then you will recognize that what you're saying of scale or light can do all of those things because how does an energy being of standing waves and vibrating particles get sick? Okay. We are not these physical bodies. Sure. We're avatar bodies in the third dimension, powering these spiritual energy beings, right? You know, ambulating us, eating, engaging in sex, whatever else that we can do as physical bodies. But this is not who we are at base essence. So you are 100% right. At base essence, we are electric beings. We are energy beings. We are biophotonic plasma exploding in the universe, you know, of energy. Of, mm -hmm. Again, energy and frequency. Right. And that's why what you're saying or what you're doing when you, and again, I haven't done this guys that are listening to this podcast right now, but I'm very excited to do this and I'm going to give him my photo probably in the next hour be when this podcast ends. But um, dude, I'm blown away by this. And I am, like I said, I know that this does work. I know that an energy signature can change, you know, the resistant patterns in energy, you know, frequencies of people. And, you know, I want to add your, or get your commentary, but as you know, the people that get sick are traumatized at a spirit level. Right. Their energy is in resistance because of something that's happened to them, whether it was, in, you know, and when they came out of the womb, when it was a past life, it was, you know, current life, they got beat up as a kid, abused emotionally, physically, psychologically, whatever. And now they have this like energy field that creates disease, right? They have cellular inflammation leads to physical degradation. The physical degradation creates one of the diseases of aging, right? I mean, that's what happens to the flesh puppet, but that's not what they are. So I know what you're saying is hundred percent accurate, but can you kind of comment on, can you help people with their, you know, their energy trauma too? Yeah. Yes, we can. Uh, these instruments, which are consciousness, scalar right. energy is consciousness. Right. Many people tell me that within a day or two, that they're much more tranquil or that they, they feel some type of uh, uh, release of, of a burden. Others will say it lifted their depression. Some say this has helped them kick, say, nicotine cigarettes or recreational drugs. How does that happen? By intelligence, by this divine intelligence. So that instrument is so strong that it has a profound interface on the brain waves and our seven chakras. And in so doing, our psyche changes. It has a, an uplifting capacity, if you will, to change our mood. To, to uplift our mood, to change our outlook on life, to remove a phobia, to remove an addiction. All of that is by way of this chakra balancing, as I call it. All of that is done by way of this instrument. It's not me as the operator. The animating force always is scalar energy. Why? Right. It's right. instructive energy. It's right. not electricity. So when you're immersed in this scalar energy force field, it's good for the soul, mind, and right. body. What So what you're really doing is, is you're balancing the human wave field. Yes, exactly. Bring it to homostasis. Exactly. Yeah. This is amazing, bro. Yeah. Like I'm having this bro it out love fest with you right now. You <laughs> know it. And you only can do that. You only can achieve that with a scalar energy. You don't right. achieve that with a... a electricity which is entropy which right. is which is energy that degrades which is really a negative consequence scalar energy is does never never experiences entropy meaning what it's the perfect energy that never dies won't you don't you want to have the perfect energy that never dies inside you as opposed to electricity that causes death right so if, you, funny, if you look at perfect health, perfect health is perfect intelligence. Right. So if scalar energy is perfect intelligence, you will never die. You will never age. Hey, guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, Limitless Life Nootropics. For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604, to immunity with TA1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. You know what's going through my mind as you're saying all this? It's kind of mind-blowing, actually. 
is I'm thinking about the Gnostic texts and the Gnostic teachings and how they talked about, you know, scale or energy, divine source consciousness <laughs> versus the mimicking agent, which, you know, they call Yala Bayoth or the Demiurg or the, the copying energy. So it's the inversion of God, creation, source, energy. It's the imic, the great imitator, which is electromagnetic energy, which, as you said, literally can only copy and imitate. It does not have divine creative energy. You know, Dude, even, this is mind blowing stuff correlating all this. Even there's even mentioned in the Bible that some people live 600, 700 years of age. Right. Why? Because we had a strong scalar energy environment. Exactly. The and field. We, yes. Yes. Yeah. We had the field. Yeah. We we had that force field. Yeah. That's, That's right. why people, biological life would flourish, right. whether it's people, animals, or plants. That's why some people live to age of 800, 900 years of age. Is right. that possible today? No, because right. we don't have that dissonant. force field. Yeah. There's At still there's time, so much dissonant energy everywhere, Tom. Right. There's no, there's no way to escape the dissonant energy fields that are around us now in modern, modern day life and culture. I mean, you could definitely go up into the wilds of Tibet or, you know, in like in the Northern aspects of Russia where there's no life, there's no energy, you know, it's all divine creation aspect energy from God, from source consciousness, you know, and you probably, if you just live there, you could probably easily live to 150, 160 years. If as long as you had sustenance, it could feed yourself. But you're right. There's absolutely no doubt about it. I mean, the energy of the planet at that time was not, you know, destroyed and decimated with all this electromagnetic fields. And truthfully, again, Furstenberg in his book, the, you know, the electric rainbow, he talks about how all of these changes to uh, the, the, the uh, biofield or the energy fields of humankind, you know, started at night, what was it in, uh, in 1870 or whatever, when they created the radio frequency yeah. and how every time they've advanced the radio frequency to higher levels of, you know, technology and EMF pulse. And now we're into 5g and 6g, it represented massive loss of life to yes. the biodiversity, not just human life, but the Correct. plants and the animals and trees Correct. and vegetation. I mean, it's crazy what we're doing to the planet. Yeah. Yeah. We need a new system. Scalar energy is the replacement for the electromagnetic grid. That's what I want to do. We have to change the paradigm. The, we're on the road to destruction. Scalar yeah. energy will be our best friend. We've got to stop this nonsense. We need a new solution. I mean, just, just look at the past two years of the pandemic. I mean, yeah. look, at the mistakes, yeah. look, at the, look at the mistakes that were made by you know, government, big business, and people that should have known better. Right. Well, what does that tell you? Obviously, they don't have the answers. This is not utopia, people. This is not heaven on earth. I mean, you're. I mean, dude, this has been such an amazing podcast. Let me post some of your sites here and stuff. Um, well, let me ask you, you know, kind of a final question, um, and then you know, I think I want. I think what I should do is I should have you back. And we do a live stream, you know, get a week of promotion and get a lot of people to watch this live. And, you know, we can do an analysis of my photo or maybe even bring somebody else in and do photos. And we can just, you know, go deep um, about like how we can help people. So, you know, so people can obviously like piece this together and see this, you know, firsthand than just listening to this podcast, which is again, profound. But um, how far are we away, Tom? I mean, obviously it's going to take a community. Yeah of people like us pushing this into the ether, but like, you know, can we realistically save the planet from destruction? Because yes. to me, yeah. yes. I mean, I want you to link this, but to me, we're this close to their end game and their end game is transhumanism. Their end game You're is right. getting people into the metaverse, this AR reality where their, their energy again, you know, their biofield is going to be siphoned for mm. electromagnetic, which, as you know, is dying control. energy. Yeah, we're going to be controlled. I don't know why people Literally. don't see the, the end game. We're going to be slaves. You can see it's subjugation. It's slavery. Call it what it is. Well, Tom, you you just proved it on this podcast. 
electromagnetic energy is not creation energy. No, it's death. It's, it's, it's death wave energy. Yeah. It's death field energy. So guess what, guys? When you go into the metaverse and you plug in, they are using your soul energy like a battery. They need it. Yeah. It's crazy. You're right. How can people not see this? Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't believe the lies, people. Pray, ask God, ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. Don't believe their lies. We're it's being totally lied true, to. Brother. It's absolutely true. Okay, so guys, look, man. Go to his website. I've been on his website today. I've been sending this out in my private group, scalerlight.com. He's also on social media, of course, on YouTube, Tom Palladino Scaler, and on Facebook, Experience Scaler. So, Tom, you get the final words. If somebody wants to connect with you, work with you, uh, reach out to you, bring you on a podcast, what is the best way for them to do that? I'm all about results. I, I'm about performance. So go to the website, scalarlight.com. Anybody can sign up for a free trial, scalarlight.com. You're going to email us your photograph and email us your family photographs and even your pets. We will treat you for free for 15 days. We'll perform a chakra balance, a microbial cleanse, and then a nutrient program every day for 15 days. After 15 days, then you report to us how you feel. This is how we introduce this new technology to the world, by our 15-day free trial. That's the key. And once people are convinced, then we can go the next step and the next invention and the next discovery. So we need a foothold. The 15-day trial is the foothold. Okay, cool. And you uh, have my promise that I will uh, work with you starting effectively today uh, to experience this for myself and my family. And then uh, I promise you, uh, because I'm very enthused about this, and obviously this is what I am born here and brought into this this current incarnation to do. And I'm sure both of us have been doing the same thing many times. <laughs> yeah. We have been probably going down this rabbit hole many, many times in many realities and whatever to do this. But uh, I'm, I'm really grateful that you were here today. You, uh, blessed to talk to you, blessed to find out more about this technology. So again, guys, if you're watching this show, please go to scalerlight.com, visit Tom on social media, uh, look for some more stuff from him and I coming. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.